Maxine Waters, she acknowledges that there's issues in the world. I just feel and like she's one of the issues. She lives in a fucking mansion. Yeah. How does that work? How do you have a security gate? But you're saying defund the police. <laughs> <laughs> you don't live with the niggas. You don't live with these niggas. Black Democrats are mean as fuck. When Welcome to the Fall of State. I am Destiny Peterson. A quick reminder, we are on Patreon, so click the little description to support our work. I have with me Destin Troyce. He is the host of the YouTube channel Choice TV, where he covers pop culture, celebrity gossip, and more. Welcome, man. Hi, my loves. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Amazing. So, how, you a male, right? Yes. How did you get into gossiping? Men don't gossip. To be honest with you, <laughs> it's one of those things where regardless of how you like to flip it, twist it, bop it, turn it, everyone gossips in some way. We all talk about other things. But men don't gossip. Um, that's a stereotype. That's a st stereotype created to make us all feel like we have to be in a bubble and act a certain way. And so what does it feel like being a male who gossip? It feels fucking great because I'm getting paid. It feels what? It feels great because I'm getting fucking paid. <laughs> how old are you? I'm 21 years old. Oh, you're Z. Huh? You're Generation Z. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Many yeah. people say millennial. Oh, 20, 20 years old? I was born in 1999. It might be, I don't know. And so I was looking at one of your videos, you did something called Must Bang. Mug Bang, basically. Mug Bang. Yeah. <laughs> and with a live stream while eating. Yeah, basically. How, what's the purpose of that? How did that come about? Well, the thing with mug bangs is it's basically where you sit down and you talk to the camera. Well, since I have like really bad anxiety, I get really distracted easily. So having the food there makes me feel like I'm talking to like a friend. And then since I have the camera there, I can record myself talking and breaking down, having a discussion about stuff. Why are you eating? I'm eating because it stimulates my mind. So the food made you feel better? Yeah. It, cause, it, it prevents you from going into that stress mode? Yeah, it basically helps me like focus, like I have something to do while I actually focus and talk to the camera. So it's like a, like a drug or something? Yeah, like endorphins, like crack. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> and so I saw one of your videos where you were eating a, a cooked alligator. Yes, I was. Was that real? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a real alligator? Yeah, they sell them in Louisiana. And how did you get that? Basically, they sell them for like $375 on the internet. You can buy a lot of shit on the internet. Oh, you can? Mm -hmm. And so um, this mukbang thing is real popular, right? Yeah, it is. It gets you a lot of views. So a lot of uh, your generation, are they all stressed out or something? To be honest, yeah. A lot of us are stressed out. A lot of us need some type of... A lot of us need video content to stimulate our minds. And a lot of people have came up to me personally and told me, Oh, your your mug bang is just the sound of you chewing and smacking and slurping on shit. It makes me relax. It stimulates my mind. <laughs> that what people tell you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what gender what age group watch your stuff? My age group is ranges from the age of 13 to 45. Really? Yeah, I've had grown women, I've had grandmothers, I've had mothers come up to me and tell me that they enjoy my discussions, my eating videos. It's insane. I've had people come with their parents and ask me to take pictures. It's really wild. Are you surprised by all that? I am surprised, because I'm like, who are all these old ass motherfuckers coming up to me? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> And does that make you feel good when they do that? Yeah, it does, because it shows me that, that not just kids are watching me, because I don't fucking like kids, so I'm glad it's not just kids watching me. I you like don't everybody. like kids? No. Why not? Kids are fucking annoying. In what way? They're expensive as shit. Um, Kids are a lot of work. I mean, one fuck up you make, you just fuck up your kid's whole life. And before you know it, your kid is on Pornhub getting trained out by like four cocks. Do you have <laughs> kids? No, I don't. So how do you know all this? <laughs> because you could fuck up kids so easily. I mean, look at the media. Look at half the shit we see on the news. I mean, before you know it, it's just like we're going to have a whole society full of brainwashed robots. Is that what happened to you? Not at all, actually. I was, I'm a critical thinker. I think for myself. I don't let the media dictate my thoughts. That's why I'm an independent. Oh, you are? Did you, uh, what made you decide to come up with a YouTube channel? You were walking down the road and what happened? I, okay, so I started my channel when I was in high school. So I was a sophomore in high school. And this was July, 
this was around the beginning of July of 2015. And basically, I needed money. I didn't have any jobs at all. Like, I didn't have a job at all. This was like, this was during the time Obama was in office. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> so basically, I ain't had no freaking money. So I'm like, you know, I need an extra source of income. What do I do? And then I figured, okay, what are my talents? What am I good at? How can I utilize my... Um, how can I use, utilize what I have to yeah. get what I want, yeah. which is money and financial st stability? So I said, okay, cool. Um, people have always told me my entire life that I'm funny. I've always been told that, so I said, F it. You know, there's a whole bunch of boring, ridiculous people who go on the internet talking about nothing. Let me just start this YouTube channel since I see everybody's making a good income out of it. Right. So I started, I had like a little ice cream sandwich Android phone. I got like two lamps out of my living room and I set up my um, tripod and from there I just been posting every week and things really took off after like two years. Really? Are you glad that Obama is out of there, the fall of Messiah? Very glad. I literally loathe Obama. Like I literally have a huge resentment for Obama because he's so fake and I hate fake people. Yeah. And what pisses me off about Obama is the fact that people just glamorize him like, oh, this black man, this our Lord and Savior, when he ain't <laughs> do shit for these niggas. Yeah. So this is like... <laughs> What did you think about Big Mama, his wife? <laughs> <laughs> Big Mama Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think Michelle is de decent. I just feel as though that she's part of like this leftist agenda to try to manipulate us. Yeah. I feel like if we were going to vote for someone just because, oh, this beautiful black family, we should have just fucking elected the Huxables. Like, we should have just elected them as president rather than just Obama, who was a puppet. Yeah. Are you voting for the Great White Hope? You know what? Um, oh, Trump has done some beneficial things, but I just don't know if he really deserves my vote necessarily. What do you mean? I just feel like, I think there's a lot of issues where I think they do deserve recognition and attention. And I think Trump is more so like a businessman. Like, I don't care about that, I'm about this money. Where I'm just like, yikes, um, that's very dismissive. Um, you can't just dismiss people's issue if you're a businessman, you care about the economy, you know? Let's talk about like the trauma that goes on in the world right now and all this other shit, you know? I feel like he does do good stuff. Yeah. He just, I just don't know. I just feel like we need a, we need a good people to be president. Like I hate that as as Americans, we have to vote between the lesser of two evils. Like that's that's not fun. But like, he's a good man. A good man, right? You know you what? You gotta admit he is a good man. I will admit that he's a decent man. Yeah. <laughs> I will admit that um, he is he's business savvy. He's strategic. Um, he doesn't just cater to white Americans, he caters right. to all Americans. All so that's what I do respect about Trump. So do we have your vote? You know what? I'm probably going to sit this election out. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to set this one out because I I'm mean, just like... I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> you know what? I just feel like if you, um, if you as a president, you know, if you work for Americans, you got to be willing to try to come to conclusions with all Americans. And I feel like despite, you know, the leftists and the liberals and all that stuff, you have to be able to like reason with them. Like, okay, fine, you guys don't like me, but what can we do strategically? You can't work like, with How can the Black Caucus like sit down with him and communicate? What can we do? He doesn't care. He's just like, whatever, I'm a businessman. That's um, not true, he tried to, but. Oh yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Yeah. They were like, we refuse. And yeah. I'm just like, typical. So now will you vote for him? I'm still gonna have to sit this one out, honestly. I just, I just feel like, I just feel like we just need a a good moral character, and I, I don't know. I'm gonna let America make the decision for me. I just don't feel like there's no way in hell I'm voting for Biden. That's all I know. So, <laughs> and why not Biden? He is a clown. He is a fucking racist. He's a disgusting pig. A pedophile with dementia. In the 1970s, he actually supported segregated schools. People don't even know that because people don't do their research. And Biden even said, if we don't vote for him, then we ain't black. So I'm like, this is what Kanye tried to tell us. Like, these people don't even prioritize or even respect our votes. Yeah. And we sitting up here voting for them for the past 50 years, and they don't even, they're not even doing shit for us. Like, like we're brainwashed. Like, don't well, none of them really do. pedophile. He likes to sniff kids. <laughs> <laughs> and so will you vote for Kanye West? I would definitely vote for Kanye West. Oh, you would? <laughs> and so this, this thing that you do on screen while eating while doing is that called gluttony, gluttony. gluttony while you it's, live streaming? Basically, um, people have told me you're promoting obesity, you yeah. fat pig, fuck you, you're promoting obesity in the black community, da, 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 like all types of shit. 
But I feel like it's only gluttony if you stuff your face like every fucking day. I really only post like twice a week. And then other than that, I'm fasting and drinking herbal tea the rest of the week. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you exercise too? <sighs> That's a little hard. I don't really like to exercise. But either. Uh, with exercising, it's like, it's too much fucking work and- But either, male. Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay, exercising is good for you. I feel right. like I should exercise. I have a, you sitting on TV eating all day. I have a gym membership. You ate an alligator. You need to be working uh, out uh, a year nonstop. <laughs> I, I have a gym membership. I, I use it like once a month. Whenever I'm bored, I'm like, hey, F it, why not? But other than that, I'm just like, ugh, so much fucking work. Like, I don't want to go in there. You know, people spreading all types of bacteria. When you go in the gym, no one has like their mask on. I'm like, is it? But then, oh, then again, I wasn't working out before then. So. That's right. <laughs> so that's just an excuse. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. Black people, you know, we love making excuses. Uh -huh. so why are we not getting where we need to be? <laughs> And so I can't get over why people like watching your video eating. It's an anxiety thing. It's like, more of a woman thing too. <laughs> um, I feel like people are people and people are gonna make decisions based on what they feel like is good for them. And plus, how many people do you know can say that they get paid to eat on camera? Right. Barely no one. But it's more of a woman's thing, not a man thing, right? It may be a woman thing, but at least I'm getting paid. Yeah. I'm getting that check. That's right. So um, I want to know a little bit about your parents. You were raised with both parents? I was raised with both parents until I was like 12. And what happened? Um, they fucking hated each other. Your parents did? <laughs> they hated each other. <laughs> and how do you know that? <laughs> One time my father said something really horrible and said, he basically told my mom that she's ugly as fuck and she needs to stop skin bleaching because her face is messed up. And one time when it was time to pay rent, I remember one time when I was like eight, he crumbled up, he crumbled up the money because I think he had like, he has like a drinking problem, like a gambling problem. So I remember him crumbling up money and throwing it in her face because she kept asking for the rent money, but he wouldn't give it to her. So they didn't really like each other and they actually stayed together just for the kids. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 oh so, my god. I, how many siblings do you have? I have two siblings. One of them I don't know. One I grew up with and I'm close with, and another one I don't claim. Are you the oldest? No, I'm the youngest. I'm the baby. Oh, and so you saw your parents go through all this? Yes. And what was that like for you observing them going through that? Um, it was very toxic. Um, that's actually a big reason why I meditate and have anxiety, because I hate confrontation yeah. because of that. I understand. But I have to be able to deal with confrontation yeah. because since I'm so nice and my voice isn't very intimidating, people walk all over me. Yeah. So I got to like check bitches, like who the fuck you think you're talking to type shit. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I hate confrontation because of what they went through and how they argued so much. Yeah, I understand that. And so your father left your mother at some point? Yeah. Oh, uh, no. They he left they us. Let's put it that way. He left. He left us. He left the entire family. He just couldn't take it anymore. But I thought he could get along with your mother, but he loved you guys. He just couldn't handle the mother. To be honest, I feel like he loved us, but he wasn't very nice to me, my brother. I have very horrible, traumatizing memories of him being very mean to us. Having like, I remember him, I remember being like 10, 11 years old, watching him like literally like watching the game and then literally like passing out on the couch or like randomly like, he wouldn't even turn on the TV. He would pretend the TV's on and he would just literally like just <laughs> drink whiskey until he fucking like fell asleep and passed out. But do you blame him? You were living with your mother. Yeah, my mother was pretty fucking psychotic. I would, wouldn't want to live with her either. Really? In what way was she psychotic? Um, she was very controlling. She was very passive aggressive. She, I feel like she was very like schizo, bipolar. She had very like horrible like mood swings. Like one day she'd come home screaming and crying for like little reason. Like if you left the shower curtain open, she'd be like, I thought I fucking told you to leave the shower curtain closed. And I'm just like, why are you yelling? The next minute she'd be crying, and I'm just like, what the hell is wrong with this lady? <laughs> Me and my siblings would be like, is this fucking real? And then it's just like, she was crazy. Like, she had severe issues that she never diagnosed oh, and tamed. And when you would tell your father to help you with that, what would he say? Um, to be honest with you, my father was no help at all. He was a worthless drunk that just sat on the couch all the time. And what was wrong with him? Um, he was really mean to us. He wasn't very nice. Like, let's put it this way. Um, 
he had a habit of ignoring things. Why like would I'd you? Be, Go ahead. Like I'd be like, oh look, I got an A on this, and he'd be like, yeah. Like he just like would ignore us. He didn't pay us any attention. It was almost as if we were living with a roommate. Wow. How did that make you feel? Um, that made me feel pretty annoyed, but it also was, I guess it was, um, it taught me a lot because it taught me how to tolerate and accept people for who they are. Because oh. then I understood, I mean, hey, if that's who you are, then it's what it is, it's whatever. But then that came with disadvantages because I have a bad habit of letting bad behavior slide. Yeah. And so when he left, I mean, who were you closest to before he left? In spite of what they were doing, mm. were you closer to your father or your mother? Or neither? Neither. Uh, I didn't, I genuinely, I can wholeheartedly say I don't like either of my parents to this day. To this day, you don't like To this day, I don't like either of my parents. Do you ever see them? No, I haven't seen my, I haven't seen my father in a year and a half, and I haven't seen my mother in a year. I cut her off out of my life. Because of the way she is? Yeah, she has mental health issues. She just doesn't want to get help. She doesn't think clearly. She's very narcissistic as well. Right. If I were to bring this up, she'd be like, oh, but you, you this, you that. Like, she's, she projects issues. So I'm like, I don't want to deal with that shit. Are both your parents black? Yes. Really? And so you have an older brother? I have an older brother that's 11 months older than me, and I have an older brother that's 38. And they have the same parents? No, my mother has four different baby daddies. Really? Oh, uh, no wonder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, wait, matter of fact, let's see. No, she has three different baby fathers and she has four kids. Wow, so how are the other kids doing? <clears throat> you know what? Um, my brother, who had the same father as me, we're pretty decent because we, we grew up the same way. Right. So like we grew up learning the same lessons. Yeah. Um, my sister, on the other hand, is a fucking train wreck. And my older brother, I have no idea what he's doing with his life. I just know that he's married and he lives in a whole different country. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And your sister is a train wreck in what way? <sighs> Where do I fucking begin? You got time? <laughs> <laughs> my sister is, she, she's, a, she's a huge product of my mother. She projects, very narcissistic, um, very passive aggressive. She's also very, she wasted the majority of her life um, just chasing dudes. She was a stripper. She was all types of things. Oh, like yeah. um, She used to do drugs, mollies and stuff. I don't know what it is, but my sister moved out of the house when she was 18, so like, like a years ago, like this was like 2007, she moved out of the house when she turned 18. She left and then I saw her like, and then she moved back in like five years later and she just wasn't the same person. Yeah. Like, and then I find out that she was doing mollies and she was a stripper and that she was prostituting and selling her poom poom and all types of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, she just wasn't the same, the same person that moved out at 18 and then she even like dropped out of high school like right after she moved out. Amazing. And so have you ever done drugs? I did drugs one time, actually. But it wasn't like something serious. It wasn't like no crystal meth shit or like What'd no crack. I did Adderall, which is like a study drug. You familiar oh, with it? Yeah. So that's what it, it was like to focus because I was like trying to study for yeah. a test. Are you, um, you smoke pot? No, I don't. It makes me lazy as shit. So I stay away from that kind of stuff. And so your brother, uh, you and your brother see each other now? We do. Yeah, good. And you living out on your own? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, man. And how you like that? It's amazing. Yeah. It's like, like I have to reprogram myself to like literally feel comfortable. Like sometimes like um, I have, I, sometimes I have like random anxiety attacks when I hear a car door slam outside my house. Uh. And I'm like, what is that? But then that like actually is like a huge reminder of like my parents coming home and me like resenting them coming yeah. home from work. I can imagine. So I have to like reprogram myself and I've been on my own since I was, I, I've been on my own since the week I graduated high school. That's amazing. So I literally moved out four days before graduation. And your brother's out on his own too? Yeah. The one that's close to you? Oh, uh, yeah. And he's doing good? Yeah, he's doing fine. He uh, works and like has like a whole girlfriend and everything. Like He has his own shit. He has a whole girlfriend? Yeah, he has like his whole thing going on. Oh, I see. Like, and so have you life. ever thought about forgiving your parents? I'm not ready to. Why Until not? they actually do some self-reflection and they actually take responsibility for their own actions. Because I can forgive you and be like, oh yeah, you know, I forgive you. But then if you're doing the same shit, it's just like, I mean, what's the point of forgiving you if you're going to turn around and do the same shit and lie and steal and do all types of shit? So that you can overcome your panic attacks. Um, I think because I'd rather just you, go to therapy and do meditations and breathing exercises. But if you forgive your mother, you will overcome her because you become like what you hate. So you have your mother's identity. 
So if you forgive her, God will forgive you and take her identity away from you, and the panic attacks will stop. Hmm. Because your mother can't help herself. You know how you can't help yourself? Yeah. <laughs> she can't help herself, so you know how she feels. That doesn't mean you got to hang out with her or give her your money. But if you want to stop the overcome the panic attack, you need to forgive her. I'm sorry for resenting mm. you. I realize now you can help yourself. I became like you. I have panic attacks. I'm a little bitch, and I, I don't want to <laughs> be that way. And you don't want to be that way, right? You no. don't want to be a little bitch, right? No, I definitely don't. So you want to overcome being a bitch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to forgive your mother then, and God will forgive you and give you back common sense, and your life will be amazing. Okay, I'll consider it, but like... And your father, too. They can help oh, themselves. My father. Oh, mm, you're crossing the line there. I don't know about that. But they both cannot help themselves, and as long as you resent them, you're going to be in the same mode. But isn't that like making excuses for like two grown-ass people in their 60s? No, that's on like, them. <laughs> their problem would still be on them, but you'll be free. And that way you don't pass it on to your family if you start one. See, I had that mentality at first, but then I had to understand that like... Um, you can't, like, I can't sit up here and force myself to forgive someone who's not going to take accountability for their actions but only because... But that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is you, and you'll be you're becoming like them because you do resent them because anger is judgment. And when you judge, you'll be judged. So mm -hmm. if you forgive them, they can stay the way they are. They don't have to apologize or anything. At least you will have an amazing life. God will take that away from you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then just keep their dist my distance. Yeah, you don't have to hang out with them. You don't have to talk to them or anything, but you will be free. Okay. And they don't have to apologize or anything. You forgive them. Don't ask for forgiveness. God will forgive you. Even though she tried to steal my tax, my taxes? Yeah. Okay. And then you'll be able to stay away from her. <laughs> that makes sense? Oh, um, yeah. I, I'll. It's, it's just going to take some time. Like, I just need a... Stop, reflect, breathe, and just take it all in for a little bit. Cause, don't wait too long. Yeah, because, you know, they're pretty fucking old, so. Yeah, so you can't wait too long. Yeah, I got to remember, they also grew up in a different generation. They grew up in, like, the fucking 60s, 50s, so they have, like, a whole different experience in the world where yeah. parents don't give their kids affection or respect. Yeah. So forgive them so you can have a better chance. Okay. All right, let me know how it goes. Okay. So I want to ask you about patriarchy and black men. You recently tweeted, we need... You got the tweets. So what? Uh, <laughs> you pulled up the tweets. That's right. I didn't expect that. That's right. You tweeted that we need a protest for black women being unprotected due to patriarchy and uh, misogyny. What do you mean by that? Basically, I feel as though that um, movements like the Black Lives Matter movement, the Black Panther movement, stuff like that has honestly ostracized and ignored women. It's like men have been the head, the forefront of everything. Like we had the Malcolm X, we had Martin Luther King, we had this person, that person, um, Al Sharpton, uh, let's see, Maxine Waters, all these other people. So it's just like it's been dominated mostly by men, but we also have women too who do have a voice but don't often get shown as much. So I feel as though that sometimes that reinforces the fact that, okay, fine, you know what? This is like a men's game. Men should be the head of the pack. Men should be the, the ringleaders, yeah. which I guess that's what, you know, that's like what, you know, that's what most conservatives are. They believe men should be the leaders. Yeah. But then again, sometimes that leads to women being ostracized and ignored when there's other women who do matter. Because, you know, people don't even realize this, but... Statistically, um, black women are black women and women of color in general are more susceptible to human trafficking because of their um, uncircumstanced communities. Because of majority of women of color live in disadvantaged communities. So they need to be protected by black men. Because yes, because they do have a bad habit of ignoring the issues that they face and the fact that you know, of course, we see that there's a constant debate of black women being upset at black men because black women aren't black men aren't protecting them or acknowledging their issues. Right. So when you, when you ignore someone's issues for so long, they get fed up and they build resentment and they build anger. So that's why there's so many black women constantly speaking out against black men. And yeah. I see it and I hear it and I listen, but unfortunately the majority of black males don't listen. But they don't have a chance because like your mother did to you, the black women destroy the boys when they're little boys. <laughs> to be honest with you, I feel like we're gonna have to 
condemn the black fathers for not being in their child's life. But if you're destroyed before you have a chance, how can you ever be a strong father from generation to generation if your mothers are destroying you while you're little kids? I feel like you do have a point. Um, mothers could play a role in teaching men how to respect women. Yeah. Because mothers could do that, yeah. but most women, mothers don't. Right. In fact, most mothers just do the best they can and they don't know anything about being males or the male experience. They hate the fathers of the children, so they destroy the children. I'm gonna have to agree. A lot of times I do agree. Um, even like, cause I didn't realize that I didn't really care for my father until like I was like 12, cause he left the household at, like, a, at, like when I was like 12, when I was 11 or whatever. And my mother did have a bad habit of constantly bashing him. Yeah. But of course, I already knew the nigga wasn't shit. So she didn't have you to do that anymore. What? I already knew he wasn't shit. So Amazing. You were a kid. You didn't know. I didn't know. You anything. had your mother's identity. You didn't know what you were seeing. But the thing is, she tried to like make us like, she tried to like, she, she wanted a family so badly where she tried to like suck it up and like ignore <laughs> her pain. So I saw through it because, I mean, how can you ignore the fact that your father is calling your mom an ugly ass bitch and throwing money in her face? It's just <laughs> like, you see these things. Like, you know, kids are smarter than you think. So did you identify with her? Um, I didn't identify with either of them, to be honest. I don't feel like either of them really played a role in who I am today. Do you love them? Yes. You love your parents? Well, I love my mother. I don't necessarily know my father because he was so dismissive and ignoring. He just took up space. Is there a part of you, even though you don't know him, that yearn or desire to know him? Yeah. Yeah. I always wonder, like, who was he before this? Who was he? Because my father grew up in a third world country, and he's yeah. like, like, uh, like, he's like, in his side of the family, I'm like first generation American. Where is he from? He's from Haiti. Oh, I see. So, yeah, so to be honest, it's like, I wonder what his life was before that or why he was that way. Where did his drinking issues come so from? So, now that you can afford to call him, why don't you call him and ask him? Don't yell at him, don't treat him the way your mother would treat him, but ask him. Hmm. You know what? I never thought about that. Because with my father, I just feel as though that... Um, you treat him the had, same way your mother treated him. I feel like he has ample opportunity to take the initiative, but he doesn't. So okay. what's the point of taking the initiative when the person who um, was in your life for a little bit doesn't take the personal Because if initiative? he tried to contact you before now, you would treat him and talk to him the same way your mother would. It'd be like dealing with his, your mother. He, he doesn't know how to handle that. Good point. Maybe I'll consider it one day, but just not now. Like I need, I need my space. Like I don't, I don't want to deal with that. But the sooner you energy. do it, the better you feel. You feel, because he want to hear from you. I'm sure he does, but so just say, hey, Dad, what happened? What were you like before you got with my mother? That's I. You know, I never thought about that. Yeah. I never thought about that. But the thing is, recently, when I, the last time I saw him. He tried to apologize, but you ever like meet someone that like tries to apologize, but they hit you with the okay, I apologize, but I did this because of this and this and that. Right. It's just like that apology is full of shit. Like get that out of my face. Like but who are you you're old to? enough now to understand it. Yeah, I'm old enough now to understand so it. So give it a try. I'll consider giving it a try. Aren't you glad he came? Uh, Look how much information you got already. Yeah. See there. So define patriarchy for me. Patriarchy is the belief that men basically have to be the head of the household and have to run everything. When that's not, that I feel like I understand it, but I feel like it doesn't have to be that way. Women can sometimes run the household. Well, he's the head of the wife, not the house. The woman is supposed to run the house, clean, cook, iron, sew, stay pregnant in the kitchen. I feel like that's so old school. That's but that's so, what works. I feel like... If a woman wants to work and go out there and get an education, why can't she do so and have kids and raise a family at the same time? Because she can't. It doesn't work that way. She's just a man helpmate. Mm. She is to watch over his children, cook and clean, and and uh, report back to him when he get home from work, so he can discipline the kids or whatever. I feel like with wives, I do agree that that's a good system because. The man worries about the money, yeah. the woman worries about keeping things sane and balanced. Right. But that only limits a woman's effort to, that, to learn no who she is. There's no greater effort than that. There's nothing better than a woman doing that because mm -hmm. she's being her natural self. 
Good point, but in some cases, there are some times where women have children and they enter a relationship, they enter a marriage, and then they forget who they were before they had kids. They surrender their life to their husband and their child, which I don't feel like they should That's have to. That's what they're supposed to do. But why can't she pursue a bigger education? Why can't she learn about herself? Why can't she? Because it's greater to raise kids than it is to go out and get an education. Good point. I can't argue with, <laughs> can't argue with that. But I do feel like things don't have to be that way because there are proven cases where sometimes, in some cases, very minimal, where women do a decent job raising their sons alone or I, raising their daughters alone. I've never seen it. Um, let me think. <laughs> Give me a second. I can think of somebody famous. Someone famous. It doesn't exist. Let me think. Um, oh, um, Dwayne Wade. He had a mother figure in his life. Well, look at Dwayne Wade, though. <laughs> okay, let me, think of, let me think of somebody else. There's me, no one. I can think of someone. <laughs> <laughs> let me think. Give me like 10 seconds. So. Okay. Uh, it doesn't exist, buddy. Hold on. I know there's some out there. There yeah. are some few. Ex ex Okay, but look at Dwayne Wade. He's successful. He's rich. He's one of the most successful <laughs> NBA players look of all time. Look how messed up he is, sir. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> and so define misogyny for me. Misogyny is basically when you hate women. So you hate women? No. Why not? Basically because women are responsible for creating the entire world. Without women, there'd be no world. What? What the? Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. How without a woman, there'd be no society. No, without a man, there would be no society. Without a woman, the, the, without the woman, the man wouldn't be whole. How is that? Because the woman is what keeps the man balanced. The woman is what sometimes also keeps the man, um, keeps the kids. Like, she has the kids. She but why are the kids the so world. screwed up? You know what? I feel like the world, the, the kids are so screwed up because... Because of the woman. No. Um, no well, um, in some, well, you know what? In 50% <laughs> of the cases, the other half is the media, the fact that we depend on celebrities to be our role models. I know, but it's the man that balances the woman. The woman can't balance the man. She come into his world. If he go into her world, he gonna end up being screwed up. You know what? I feel like with, with okay, well, so with women, I feel like, that, okay, that's not always the case. Always. In, in some, okay, in half situations that's the case, and other half no, situations that's not the case. No, always. Any time a man follow a woman, he suffers. Mm, okay, but let's talk about the oppression women deal with. No such thing. Um, let's talk about the fact that um, statistically, it has been shown that women don't get paid the same wages. They like, should be at home married and have a baby. That's <laughs> but let's look at this perspective. What about the fact that we normalize debauchery in our media against women. What's debauchery? Like, as in, like, um, I mean, l listen to the music we listen to. The number one song in the country right now is WAP. Like, you know, the, the song Cardi oh, B made yeah. where basically... But if Cardi B had a good father, she, she wouldn't did, be making actually. it. She did, actually. He just wasn't in the home. If she had been, right, if she had been close to her father, she would never make that slutty song. But you can have She's a father a in your life. <laughs> but you can have you, a... You agree? <sighs> you know what? Some people could change their ways. But isn't she a slut? The music is a gimmick. Is she a slut? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think that black women are suffering because black men are being too manly? No, black men are being too dismissive towards their issues. What do you mean? Like, if a black woman says, hey, uplift us, protect us, you know, stop letting the media feel as though that they can parade us like we're these sexual beings that can be exploited, but instead black men will just ignore it and then just date them a Becky or Maria. So due to that, a lot of times black women are building resentment because they're just like, hey, protect me. Like, the black women, statistically and culturally, the black woman is supposed to be the, the life partner for the black man. The the staple that keeps them together. So when you see black men ignoring the issues that they go through and the fact that the media does berate them and ex um, just exploits them and treats them like shit, makes fun of their hair, makes fun of their skin tone, why don't black men speak up? Why don't they? Like, you know, you should speak up for women who look like your mother. 
But that's because black men hate their mothers, so they hate all black women because it's just like dealing with mama. You do have a point. A lot of them do hate their mothers, yeah. but in other situations, let's, what, okay, what if, the, what if some of them had a good support system from their mothers? Then they wouldn't have those problems. What about... What, what about the fathers? Why don't we hold the, the men accountable? Why, do, it, why don't we say that the, women, the reason why a lot of black women have issues is because the men isn't around to keep them up? Like, why aren't their fathers around to uplift and make their mothers happy? Because the women destroy them. If the black women weren't so controlling to the kids, it wouldn't be that way. I, but what are Becky's and Bucks? Becky's and Maria's. Oh, and Maria's. What are those? Basically, <laughs> I think you have an idea. What? Um, that's like a nickname that like Black Twitter has came up with for black men who disrespect black women. Like you know how like when you see the media, you see the uh, the Ice Teas, you see the uh, let's see um, the Kanyes, you see the um, the Diddies and all these rappers and influencers who have a huge control and are a huge role model to black men for some reason. Celebrities are a huge role model to black men who don't right. have parents. Right. When you see them parading and dating and having mixed children as like a fetishization and then also disrespecting black women, you see it as a, okay, fine, so you'll pass up a black woman who looks like your mother, but you'll uplift and applaud a woman who is Latina or is white. You'll applaud a different race of women, oh, but you so won't Becky applaud Oh, so Becky and Maria are white and um, Latina women? Yeah, because, uh, because of the media and the rappers who berate them and uplift them, but, but tear down black women. they're trying to get away from black women because they can't handle them. <laughs> you know what? Because they can't handle their mothers. If they can, mothers would better show real love to the kids rather than turning them away from the fathers, treating them like they have sense. Instead of opposing their will, you wouldn't have that issue. I feel like at a certain point you have to hold people accountable for being adults. As adults, that's right. So that's you, you can say, change. oh yeah, my mother and father weren't there, so I hate black women or yeah. F black women or F black men. I, I didn't have a black father, so F black men. Oh, you can say you hate black women and you hate black men because you didn't have a father in your life, but at one point, what point do you take self accountability? Well, it's you almost like. An adult. Yeah, it's just like you're an adult. Like yeah. you don't have to disrespect black women because of your circumstances. Like grow the fuck up, be an adult. That's Fix why you gotta go and forgive them. <laughs> you, you know what? One day, and you they're not that old. My parents aren't that old. One day, right? You said the black community is full of beta males. Um, I wouldn't say full of beta males. I'll say that we're full of m males who can't think for themselves and females who can't think for themselves. Oh, okay. So, um, do you date? No. You don't date? No. You, why not? You're young, you have a lot of money, you're <laughs> handsome. Why don't I, you date? I am asexual. Asexual people don't date. You what? Asexual. Asexual? Like the letter A and then sexual. It's like the, it's the A and the LGBTQ plus. Oh, that's what that is? Yeah, LGBTQIA. LGBTQIA. <laughs> yeah, that's Why did you add it with them? Basically, well, to be honest with you, the movie could be a little bit problematic because sometimes being in the part of the movie is a blessing and a curse because it's been ran and hijacked by the liberal media. But I identify as asexual because I don't date, don't have sex, never cared to have sex, never cared to be with a man, never cared to be with a woman. I'm just me. Every time people bring up, even when I was younger, when I was like 8, 9, 10, when people would bring up how they had crushes, I'd be like, awkward because so I don't. So you never feel like you want to have sex at all? <clears throat> no, not necessarily. I just don't feel the need to want to engage. I feel like the human body is disgusting because <laughs> there's so much odor and, you know, fluids that come out of it and I'm just disgusted by the human body. <laughs> what, what type of fluid come out of your body that <sighs> disgusts you? Disgusting things. Oh, well, don't tell me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> why would you want to be a part of the LGBTQIA? They, those people have no sense. I don't think it's right to generalize and be like those people. I think it's right to, I think, I think it's, I think because you got to, because I'm sure you've met people who are part of the movement but are decent people, right? But there's also people who are part of the movement who hijack it and like make it seem like you have to accept things that aren't okay. Right. You know, if you're a conservative, they hate you. If you're a, if you're not liberal enough, they dislike you. If you think a certain way because you're black, they don't like you. It's just like, 
it's been hijacked, but I feel like being a part of the movement taught me a lot about sexuality because in black households, we don't talk about these things. What did they teach you that you didn't already know? Plus, you're not interested in sex anyway. To be honest with you, I thought I was just weird because every time I would bring it up to people, like, I just never thought about dating. I've never dated anyone in my life, never kissed anyone. People would be like, you're just weird. And I'm like, maybe I am just weird. So then I did research because somebody recommended to do research on the LGBTQ+. And then I read several books about it, read articles, and I realized that there's a spectrum of sexuality. Sexuality isn't just gay or straight. It's deeper than that. There are modes to sexuality that are a big part of the world. So reading up on it and learning it, I realized, wow, okay, that label connects with me. Because when women approach me and try to talk to me, I'm like, uh, this is awkward. I'm not really into women. And then when men talk, try to talk to me, I'm like, this is awkward. I'm not into men either. Why are you talking to me? Yeah. And so do you think that that would change one day? Would you like to have a family one day? I, would, I wouldn't mind adopting a child when I'm like 70 years old and settled in my career. 70? <laughs> when I'm settled in my career. You'll be dead after eating all those alligators <laughs> on your TV show. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> to be honest with you, maybe I won't have kids, maybe I will. I don't know what the future holds. I just feel like right. when it comes to kids, it's just like, it's either left or right. Like one minute you fuck up your kid, the next minute you see your kid on Pornhub, like ass open, getting fucked about like two penises. You feel me? So it's just like, if I have kids in this crazy world that's full of media brainwashing us, who's to say that they get infiltrated and think a certain way because the media told them to? I mean, look at the black community as a whole. Like we're indoctrinated. Do you identify more with the black community or the white community? Or I identify with everyone. I love everyone. Oh, okay. All my friends are Hispanic, white, and black. Uh, different and, races. And are all of them LGBTQA? Some are. A lot aren't. You have straight friends? Yeah. The normal straight friends? Yeah. Normal straight friends, yes. Oh, okay. One of my really good friends is straight. And he dates girls yeah. and, and all that. So do you expect to change from being asexual at some point? No. You want to always be that way? Yeah, because the benefit, there's a lot of privilege in being asexual. I've never been through heartbreak, because when people tell me, oh, I'm going through a heartbreak, I'm depressed, I'm like, oh, can't relate, <laughs> can't yeah. relate. I never dated, never had sex, can't relate. Oh, it hurts, I'm, I'm going through this, or when they have, or apparently I'm hearing, I've read about sex, and I hear that it's like a spiritual attachment. Like once you sleep yeah. with someone, you're spiritually, intertwined with them, that's why people go crazy. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, why the fuck would people want to have sex? Like, <laughs> this is weird. Like, this is like some demonic shit. <laughs> Thank God I'm asexual, I don't have these issues. It's a privilege. So but do you feel numb on the inside? Kinda, yeah. When numb. it comes to like, when, e like, even watching sex scenes on TV, I feel awkward. Like, I just want to look away, like, this is awkward, this is weird. Um, do you ever get sad and lonely and that kind of stuff and wish you um, had someone? Not necessarily. I, with asexual people, we believe in friendships and I don't have many friends. I only have three friends. And they're asexual too? No, they're just straight. Oh. But we, we, just, we just desire regular friendships, like deep conversations, like just regular mental friendships. So. And why don't you have asexual friends? You know, what's crazy is a lot of people don't necessarily know what being asexual is, and a lot of people don't talk about it because the media only promotes um, gay, lesbian, gay, lesbian, straight, gay, lesbian, straight. That's all they promote. Yeah. But they don't realize that sexuality is a spectrum of different things. So when you see in the media, gay, straight, lesbian, pick one. Gay, straight, lesbian. Oh, wait, bi. There's bi, too. Pick one. Pick that. You could pick that, too. It's just like you, this is like you don't meet people who actually read and do research about these kind of things. So. That's amazing. What do you think about, um, you said that you believe the LGBTQ people are facing discrimination. Do you really believe that? I definitely do believe they're facing discrimination. In what way? The trans community is a good example. Um, the trans community, their funding was actually stripped a couple years ago. And a lot of times, well, basically trans people from healthcare institutions and organizations or whatever, they can basically turn down trans people and say, oh, no, pick a gender. We're not gonna pay for your hormone pills. We're not gonna pay for your transitional surgery. We're not gonna pay for that. Should pick we a gender. pay for that? I feel like if it makes them comfortable, But why yes. don't you get a job and pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> if they wanna destroy their bodies like that, why don't they get a job and do it themselves? Why should I have to pay for it? But that's the beauty of insurance. Like, if you wanna pay for insurance and they- Right, they, they should buy their own insurance. They wanna cut off their body part, buy your own insurance. I don't wanna pay for it. Does that make sense? I just feel like if, if, if you're an insurance company and you cater to people, regardless of who they are, 
Because realistically, like a rapist, a murderer, they can get health insurance, right? So why can't someone who is transgender identify with a certain sexuality get health insurance? Because society says, oh, no, that's not okay. We don't support that. But why they can buy health insurance, but I just don't want to pay for it. Oh, okay. I just feel like they should get health care. They should be provided. But have to pay things. for it, right? Not free. <sighs> to be honest with you, it's hella expensive. So I but just... they still have to pay for it. Hold on to the body parts and you can take it off. <laughs> That's what you do with new cars. Or when they turn old, you hold on to the car till you can afford another, right? Okay, you're right. That is reasonable. They could just pay for it themselves. Yeah. But let's talk about another form of oppression that they deal with. Uh, um, Trans people get denied military access. You know this, of Thank course. Thank God, <sighs> right? Thank God. How would you like to be in a foxhole, Allah U Abba shooting at you? You look around and here's a, a man in a dress. You know what? That's oh, just, a woman <laughs> in a man suit. Wouldn't that make you want to like, what the? That's a blanket statement. And but I feel wouldn't like, that make you nervous though? You don't feel like uh, this person is like mental. They dress up in a dress. Here you are, your life is at risk. Allah U Abba shooting at you, hit you the leg, and the drag queen just sitting there. Allah Abdubar. <laughs> Allah U Abba. Okay. I, I feel like. Would you rather be in a foxhole with a real man or a drag queen, a man who thinks he's a woman? Okay, so let's put it this way. In the military, we allow men to be in the military, but right. we also allow women to be in the military. We shouldn't, though. You, sh you don't feel like women should be in the military? Maybe to cook and be a nurse. But like, okay, let's take into consideration that a lot of women are actually war heroes just as much as men That's are. That's why we lose all the wars. I wouldn't go there. Where? <laughs> <laughs> but let's just put it this way. When it comes to, if we're gonna give access to women to be in the military, which I'm sure you don't have a problem with, even though you don't agree with it. Right. If they want to do it, let them do it. Not let really. Them... Not to fight war. I have a problem with that. Mm. I'm okay with them going in to cook, iron, mm. so and you know that kind of stuff. In Medicare but, and do and be right, nurses and stuff. Right. But not to be at war with the man. You know. I feel like that's like. I look at that as like toxic masculinity, where you feel like only men have to be the ones fighting wars. Right. Women are just as capable of holding a gun, shooting a gun. You can cheek a monkey to hold a gun, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just feel like... Am I right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, so you can teach a monkey to hold a gun, but the monkey is not going to be good as the man. I think men and women are equal. Let's put it that way. Women and men have... Women What's play equal just, about men and women? The fact that they're just as capable as getting an education, they're just as capable as obtaining a degree. A monkey can get an education. <laughs> a monkey can't get a degree because monkeys yes, aren't allowed monkey, in school. I know many monkeys <laughs> with degrees. <laughs> Okay, but women or men are just as capable as... Nope. <laughs> okay, but women and men wake up the same, they pee the same, they no, poop no, the no, same. No, no, men stand, women sit. Except for the lesbian that thinks she's a man. Let's just put it this way. Women, you know intelligent women, you know strong women, of course. No such thing as a strong woman. Only weak men. <sighs> But let's put it this way. I believe that there are strong women out there You've who are- You've never seen one. Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Maxie Waters. You too hot to beat me. <laughs> All my life I had to fight. <laughs> yeah. And, and Maxie Waters, the wicked witch of the West, with the low IQ. I feel like Maxine Waters, she serves her purpose, it, but- And that is zero. <laughs> but Maxine Waters, she acknowledges that there's issues in the world. I just feel and like she's one of the issues. I just feel like her delivery is a little bit off-putting. Yeah. Because she's one of those people who say defund the police, defund the police, but she lives in a fucking mansion. Yeah. How does that work? How do you have a security gate but you say defund the police? <laughs> you don't live with the niggas. Yeah. You don't live with these niggas. That <laughs> you're safe in your gated community. Yeah, that's right. So you I have a like, lot of common sense. I didn't expect you to have much sense. <laughs> to be honest with you, common sense isn't so common. And that's true. So I want to ask you about, how do you feel about homosexuals discriminating against Christians? I feel like if Christians don't accept your lifestyle, then that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Just understand that no one's going to accept you. It's like a white person. There is hatred in people's heart. If a white person says, I don't accept that you're black, I'm like, okay, fuck you, bitch. I'll go somewhere else. Like, I'll work somewhere else if you don't want to accept, accept me or hire me because I'm black. Yeah, so right. with LGBT people, if 
no one likes you, who fucking cares? I've had people literally tell me that I'm confused for being asexual. And I'm like, mm, I mean, you're entitled to your own opinion. Like my own brother told me, um, there's only gay and straight. And I was like, oh, you're entitled to your own opinion. Anyways, well, moving on. Well, asexual just mean you're not having sex because you're not married, right? That's celibacy. Celibacy is a spiritual commitment to yourself, to the, to, um, to the Lord or whatever, or commit yourself to spiritual cleansing. Right. So celibacy is like a choice. With asexuality, I've kind of felt this way my whole life. I've always felt this way. So do you think you feel that way because of what you went through growing up with your parents? Not per se, because my brother is straight and we went through the same thing. My brother has a girlfriend that he's been and with for like two years. you consider yourself a homosexual or anything, right? No, I just consider myself no asexual. Sex. Whatever. There's what? no sex. Yes, but hold on to it. Wait till you get married. Okay. To a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that advice in mind. What do you think about the high rate of domestic violence that's happened mm. between lesbians? There is a high rate because yeah. uh, I've, I've seen it personally. I, I, I've had friends that are lesbians and I've seen some things, but... Why is that so... Why are they so violent? I think maybe when you go in a world where you have societal pressures to be or look a certain way, you have resentment where a lot of times your parents don't accept you, the world doesn't accept you, the world tells you you're confused, and then you jump into a relationship where basically you're insecure. You grow up being insecure about your sexuality your whole life, and most lesbians don't even come out or come to terms with it until they're like preteens or at least a, um, adult age. Yeah. So when you grow up being insecure in a world full of resentment or hatred towards yourself and you get it from all ends and you get in a relationship, you don't love yourself yet because you just entered a relationship where you don't even love or accept or came to terms of who you are. Or is it possible because of their low self-esteem by being a lesbian, they know it's wrong, they just don't know how to overcome it so they become violent, I alcoholics and things like that? I wouldn't say being a lesbian is wrong. You don't say being a lesbian wrong? I don't think it's wrong because- What's right about it? When it comes to being a lesbian, if they're not hurting anyone, if they're, they're not- They're hurting themselves. But let's put it this way. When it comes to being a lesbian, as long as you treat people with respect, you respect people's political views, but religious also views. they're mean. Have you know lesbians are <laughs> like mean and nasty? That has not been my experience, but I have met some that are mean. I've met mean people in all shades. I've met mean black people. I've met mean white but people. But nobody is mean as a lesbian. <laughs> okay. I lesbian just, mean. Um, you gotta admit that. Black Democrats are mean as fuck. But I know, but lesbians are worse. To be honest with you, that's a blanket statement, and I don't agree with that because mean comes in all shades. I but know, but lesbian like. That's an individual problem if you're mean and you're a lesbian. It's like racism. If you're a racist, that's an individual problem. Meanwhile, I, if you're a lesbian, that's an individual problem. If you're hateful and rude to people. I gotta rush now because we're so close to out of time here. Are you a Christian? No. Are you an atheist? I'm agnostic. I believe there's like a higher power. Um, I believe that there's something out there that controls everything, but I don't, I wouldn't say that it was God or like some almighty thing. I just feel like, you know, the wind takes you where you need to be. You realize you're that way because you resent your father because uh, I noticed that all people who don't believe in God don't have a relationship with their earthly fathers. Fun fact, my father wasn't religious either. Right, you still don't have a relationship with him. <laughs> My mother was very religious. Oh yeah, I bet. She was very disappointed when That's I told her that I didn't believe in God. <laughs> yep. She was very she was very like like iffy when I told her I wasn't religious. And yeah. I and I and I haven't been religious since I was thirteen, like fourteen. I'm well, like, go forgive your father so you can become religious. Yes, but that'll take some time. All the time it takes for you go in and apologize for resenting him. He's gonna have to apologize for no. his actions as yeah, well. Yeah, let him deal with that, you deal with yours. Because you're asking him to do something that you mm. won't even do. But at the end of the day, I feel like you're, you're the dad. You're now. Uh, mm, you know, you're right. I am grown. I am an adult. And I think... Yeah, you're asking him to do something that you will not do. But I feel like if you start an issue, why don't you... Why don't you finish it? Mm. I never thought about that. I just need time. Right, you need, I just need time. to call. When you get home, call him. My parents old as fuck, but they're not that old. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I got at other things you disagree with me. I will give you a few minutes for that. Um, I disagree about your stance on systematic racism. What I feel mean? like I see where you're coming from. You feel like because for a while I was very like liberal, like 
the white man is tearing us down. Right. Like I was brainwashed for a while until I came across someone like Candace Owens. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say on that. And it took <laughs> me having to like watch her interviews and her podcast. Yeah. And I had to realize, holy fucking shit. I've been taught my whole life to have prejudice towards white police officers when in reality, some things can be really all in your head. Yes. When you walk into a situation where you come across a police officer who you think is gonna kill you or you think is gonna oppress you, it's like when you walk in with that mindset, it's just like that's gonna take over your life because that's yeah, no absolutely. way to live. So I do feel like systematic racism does exist. Why would you feel like something exists when you see that it doesn't? You, you know why things are. Why would you want to make yourself believe something that's untrue? I feel like a form of systematic racism could be things like Chapter 1, the 13th Amendment. I'm going to just leave that there. The fact that slavery is still legal to this day as long as you're, you committed a crime. Oh, you committed a crime, but so we're going to make you do... slavery is not legal in America. You're talking about Africa. No, no, no. Slavery is legal in America. Where? where? The 13th Amendment allows it in prison, in the prison system. But People, that's not slavery. You're a criminal. Well, let's... Don't make up stuff, man. Well, I mean, let's look at it this way. Just because someone's a criminal doesn't mean they have to be forced to work hard labor. There's actions yes, for consequences, be. but, like, why do you have to be paid 80 cents an hour every week? Because you committed a crime. I remember when they didn't get paid at all, and that was amazing. Wow, they didn't get paid they at all? They used to be chain gang people working on the railroads. <laughs> chain gang. Yeah. <laughs> And they didn't get paid. They got food, you know, bread and water. But they should not have committed the crime. You do the crime, you do the time. I agree. Don't you agree with that? I agree, but, like, why put them in a position where, for example, most people they who get... They put themselves there. You sound like them. <laughs> okay, but let's, okay, let's consider this. You do, but do you agree that it's wrong that the 13th Amendment allows slavery in prison? No. You don't think it's wrong not that they're being all. paid 80 cents an hour and only I, like 400? I, when oh. I become president, they got, they're not going to get paid anything. Uh, we put them up room and board and food. You know what? I feel like with the 13th Amendment, I think it needs to be fair. Like, okay, allow slavery, but like pay them more. Like some of them actually have like, some of them got a, like, like toilet paper. They need food. They need snacks. You'll they provide need... all that, but no money. They don't really provide all that in, in half prisons because they right. only keep you enough to keep you alive. Right. They feed you enough to keep you alive. And I'm like, how is that fair? Like, on the other hand... But the person that commit the crime should think about that beforehand, right? I agree. We do need to take some self-accountability. Yeah. But let's, be, let's, let's think about it for a second. People like um, Joe Biden um, play a huge role in mass incarceration. Yeah. I'm sure you remember the infamous 1994 crime bill, yeah. which... I guess it did serve its purpose because it did clean, it cleaned the hell up the streets. <laughs> it cleaned up the streets. Yeah. That's why you see that, you know, L.A. isn't as bad as it used to be. Even where I'm from in Florida, it's not as bad as it used to be. But the crime bill, it enforced the fact that we need more police in urban neighborhoods, which I feel like is necessary because yeah. more police is good because if you're not committing a crime, you have nothing to worry about. But what about the fact that people like Joe Biden, people like the Clintons said, Okay, fine. You know what? We want these judges. Like they put, they, they they put a lot of pressure on these judges, these Supreme Court judges. Like, hey, put harsher punishments. Get on their neck. Step on their nice. necks. And it's like, uh, but what about the people who didn't do any nonviolent crimes? Like, why are people doing 15 years in jail for having a tiny kilo of cocaine? So they why you get not to do the crime? But why does someone get? Because 15 it was illegal at that time. But I got. I hate to cut you off because you're very interesting, non-binary. Non-binary. That's I, what you are, right? Non-binary. I feel like I don't. I don't. I don't. What do you call I'm, yourself? I'm, I just say asexual. I mean, to be asexual. honest. So many fucking labels, man. I'm like, I, I can't keep up. But you're a part of it. L G B T Q T A. <laughs> That's as far as I'll go. Then take out your A. And just be an individual. Yeah. I see where you're coming from. I could just be me. I could yeah, just be destined. Be you. So tell the hell. Tell them to go away. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll just so be I gotta me. put you on the hot seat. Okay. And I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. All right? The Hot Seat. Will you celebrate Men History Month with me? This is Men History Month. Sure, why not? I believe in inclusion. And will you celebrate Straight History Month? Why not? I believe in inclusion. Should illegal alien get free health care? We'll be right back <laughs> after these commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love white people? I love white people. <laughs> Would you wear the pants um, in the relationship? 
I don't believe in relationships, so no, no pants. Who wore the pants in the relationship, Big Mama Michelle or the Father Messiah Barack Obama? Oh my God, man. I don't even believe, man, there's a lot that I can say about them. I, let me just put it this way. I believe their puppet masters wear the pants because they're being controlled. Should homosexuality be pushed on kids in schools? I believe inclusion is important, just as long as you're not telling people to be a certain way. Like, if you say, oh, hey, like, you know, you need to be this, or you have to agree with this, then that's wrong. But if you're just teaching their contributions in history, like, oh, hey, like, did you know a gay man built this? Or did you know a gay man was actually a big part of the civil rights movement? Did you know that George Washington Carver, who was um, um, known allegedly to be bisexual? You know, it's Amazing. just- Amazing. So in it's just one like- word, how would you just, well, you've already done it, but in one word, how would you describe Joe Biden? <sighs> There's a lot of words. Um, <laughs> Let me think. Um, in one word to describe Joe Biden. Um, uh, shit. Just one? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back. Have you ever done meth? Hell no. That shit has killed the entire black community. Is it racist for white people to celebrate their heritage? Absolutely not. Would you survive 100 days on an island by yourself? Yeah. I spend most of my life in my own apartment by myself anyways. Thank you for taking the hot seat on. Thank you. Did you have fun? I had a phenomenal time. Oh, amazing. I, like, like, the media really does portray you to be like this white supremacist, anti-black, like <laughs> this, you hate black people, but Jesse was really nice to me. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't expect this. I thought we was gonna have like a screaming match and that, like, this was <laughs> not what I expected. Jesse's not as bad as like people try to make him think. I mean, you've never seen me scream at anyone. No, I haven't. Yeah. I've seen people scream at you, but right. you don't return the energy. Yeah. Like, wow, I'm surprised no one has, hasn't beat your ass yet. <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah. I'm tough, that's why. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. You are. You stand firm, people yell, scream, raise their voice, walk out on you, scream from across the room. <laughs> you, you keep the same posture. Yeah, isn't that amazing? It is. So it's amazing. Forgive. Go and forgive your parents and you'll become the same way. Okay. Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And tell the folks how to get your podcast and all the stuff you offer. And check out my podcast at Time Out With Choice. That's T-I-M-E, Out With Choice. And you can check out my Patreon at uh, Choice TV. You can also follow my YouTube channel at Choice TV. That's T-R-O-Y-C-E TV. I have two channels. Check them out and support. Amazing. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you and for thank you all me. for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share, ring the bell, um, and Patreon, and uh, the merch, and all of that. Let me hear from you. Thank you so much, folks. I appreciate it. for watching the fallen state we need your continued support donate to my nonprofit here subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show that's Joe L you oh, yeah. He black. Yeah, the token black person that works here. He's a token? <laughs> the token black person. Are you saying he's the only one? <laughs> he's, a, he's probably the only black person that I've seen so far that works here. You want to put money on it? I'll give you a dollar if you can find another black person besides you that works here. The one right there with the engineer. Is he? Uh-huh. Nah. Let me have my dollar. My PR guy is black. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, so and let me have action. my money. Affirmative my, action. My uh, computer guy is black. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Affirmative action. So where's my money? <laughs> um, 
You got cash out. <laughs> That's good. You got a good balance of diversity. That's right. <laughs> You're not as anti-black as people try to make it seem. I tried to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me act like a liberal real quick. <laughs> 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 <laughs>